In today's video, I really want to talk about preseason uh, and my thoughts on it. We had a lot of questions during the live stream, a lot of things that we want to discuss, at least I want to tell you about. Then we're going to go over an article of what Dan Campbell talked about, five players who he mentioned, good, bad, and the ugly. Let's go. No, I do not wear glasses. These are blue light glasses. So when I'm in a computer, I put these on to keep my eyes safe, but I got good eyes, just FYI. So let's go ahead and talk about preseason. A lot of people that was in my stream was upset that the Lions lost 3-14. to I got the same old Lions comments. The Lions are going to suck. I've seen it all in the comments last night. And I want to talk to you why preseason doesn't matter for wins and losses. First off, preseason is a glorified scrimmage with a camera watching, okay? So wh what does that mean? It means that coaches are looking for situational football. They're very vanilla. They don't want to show anything. And they want to be able to get the reps to the younger players and players who are trying to make a roster. That's what it's about. It is not about winning nor losing because, as you've seen, Basically, all our starters didn't play yesterday because they know what they got. You don't want to get those guys injured. You know what you got with Jared Goff, St. Brown, all of them. We know we have there, right? We need to see who's going to make the roster at the bottom end. That's what preseason is about. Who is going to compete, right? Who's going to be at certain position? It doesn't matter about winning and losses. Now, look, if it was a normal game, do you, I don't know if they would go for it every single time on fourth down you would probably kick at least another field goal. That was situational for Dan Campbell and his quarterbacks, just trying to see what they, how they would react. Just like in a practice, sometimes they'll start in the red zone and they'll give opportunities to try to score or not score. That's what they were doing in preseason. So please don't get so upset that you lose a preseason game. It is not how the regular season works. Regular season wins and losses count. Preseason, a scrimmage with a camera. Don't don't get too upset about wins or losses. Things that you want to happen in a preseason game or don't happen is injuries is number one, right? And you want to see the development of some players, who's going up and who's going down. That's what it's all about. Now, in, in yesterday's preseason game, before the game started, there was three players I was looking forward to. Hennon Hooker, Sione Vaki, and Jake Bates. That pretty much was my preseason game. I was judging them. And then I want to judge you, Vani Moon, some, just some other players, right? That was my takeaways from the game is I'm going to stare at these guys and how they do. It was not about winning. It was not about losing. It was about how certain players in the bottom is going to do, right? So please don't get upset if a Lions lose a preseason game or please don't get too excited if the Lions win a preseason game. It really doesn't mean anything. Remember, we went 0-16 after going 4-0 in the preseason. So, understanding that, don't get too upset about those type of things. Please don't. When you hit week one, you're gonna even for I, you're gonna completely forget what happened in preseason. I can't even tell you last year's in preseason because I don't care. Right? It's not a regular season game. The starters are not in there. So, woof. Just get that. On there Now, there's absolute things that you can take away from preseason. That's important. That is not hyperbolic. The per performance of specific players, that is important in how they're reacting. And that's what we're going to get into right now. I haven't seen this article. I don't know what's on here. Um, it talked about five standout players from Dan Campbell. And this is the type of stuff that we are looking for. First off, great article. They understand, right? Who's done well? Isaiah Williams is a player battling for a wide receiver spot. So you're wanting to see what wide receiver in preseason stands out. It doesn't matter what you do in training camp, in my opinion, in practice. You can be a practice machine, right? You can be great in practice. Does it translate into a game? That is the big question, okay? So we heard a lot all offseason how Nate Sudfield was good in practice, right? doesn't mean anything because on the field he is exactly what we thought a guy who's not performing well in training camp we haven't heard a whole lot of Isaiah Williams when we signed him in OTAs in minicamp we, we knew he was a great route runner 
we never heard a lot. But when the when the lights are on, Isaiah Williams showed up with every single opportunity. And I agree with Dan Campbell here. He is a player who did perform well. Now, you have to put it all together for a player to make the roster. But in my opinion, when a, a wide receiver like Isaiah Williams is out there balling out or trying to do his best to make a name for himself in a game, in a live action with the camera on them, that has, that holds weight for him to potentially make the roster. Because if we are just go by training camp and not by a preseason game, if we go by training camp, we barely heard anything about Williams. Then he wouldn't be making the roster, right? But it, he, he actually performed well on the field. If the opposite way, we've heard everything about Sudfield doing great in training camp and in practice there, but he was booty cheeks when the lights are on. And you say, why is that? How is it possible for a quarterback like Sudfield to do really good in in practice but be terrible in the lights? There's many reasons. First off, in practice, you don't have edge rushers hitting you. You got a red shirt on. So, of course, you could just be relaxed in the pocket. You're not worried about anything. You're not, you know you're not going to get hit. It is different in a game. They're going to hit you. And you've seen with Sudfield, right? Skittish. Hold on to the ball too long. Um, taking the sack. That's what preseason's all about. And so in this case, Isaiah Williams showed up. And that's what we want to see. Makai Wingo, he, he, he performed well as well. And, and that's a good thing because... Again, another player who we haven't heard in practice, but he did some good stuff on the field. And now what you want to do is is replicate that in preseason week two and in three if they're in the game. Can they build upon that? Can these players do better than what they did before? And so it elevates his status, and now we got to see consistency. And now that Dan Campbell talked about it, I like to see consistency. I want to know what we have in a player. And so if... Another player continues, or Isaiah Williams or Makai Wingo, continue to to do well in the next preseason game and or better, you're starting to see consistency, right? You're starting to see. And so that's what it's about. Malik Jefferson, who I had no idea about. I'm going to keep it 100 with you. He was one of the players that stood out to me, right? A guy who we've heard zero about, but in game, he was showing out. Now, again... It doesn't mean everything, right? Just because you show out in a preseason game doesn't necessarily mean you're a good player. You got to look at the level of competition as well. So, for instance, Isaiah Williams played well, I thought, yesterday in preseason. He was generally with the third strings. Let's see what he does with the second strings, right? In preseason week two, does it continue to excel or does it go down? And that will give you an idea of how the player is performing. And Malik Jefferson came out of nowhere. Right, we I had no idea about this guy, and he showed out this first preseason game, but that was, again, with third slash four strings. So can Jefferson elevate himself if he gets moved up? That would be a consistent, you're starting to see a level. Now, if he doesn't do well against a higher graded of players, eh, you know, it's just an anomaly. If he does well or if he even performs better, you're seeing a trend. This guy's starting to get it. Ennis Rakestraw, to me, was was one of my biggest winners. I haven't seen this list here. Um, he is one of my biggest winners. Now, we've seen a consistent basis. The past week, he did good in training camp. Then, he performed well in preseason game. Consistency. Super consistent. That means the player's starting to get a little bit better, right? And he's showing his performance. That is really good. So, even though we lost 3-14, to 14, which, again, I don't care about win or losing, we can take away a lot of good from preseason. Because, again, a lot of these players that played yesterday are not making the roster. So who cares if our four strings get burnt and we get it right? Who cares? We're looking at individual players. We know our starters on offense and defense. We already know that. But who are players that elevate their status that is backup? Ennis Rakestraw is one of those guys. That is a very good thing. And for me, if Ennis keeps doing this, the Lions have options at the end of the season. Should, we may not need to extend to Carlton Davis, right? We've seen the growth, and it started in preseason. They got C.J. Moore on here as well. Um, 
made sure you acknowledge more, made some plays. He did make some plays over there. Now, CJ Moore is a veteran guy. You expect to make some plays. He's a guy I already have making the roster because of his special teams ability. But he made some plays, and I, and I get it. Uh, and again, Hedden Hooker, this was the Hooker Bowl for me, right? I was wanting to watch Hennon Hooker. It was one of my three players I was looking for. What I see from him, there was positives. It was in, tra- in training camp, we heard a lot of negatives about Hooker or inconsistencies. However, when the game's on, what did we see? A guy who was not nervous in the pocket. He didn't look nervous at all. He looked super calm, right? Throwing the football right. That's game. He's go- he knows he's going to get hit. In some of these plays, he did get hit. Yet, he was super calm in the pocket. What did we see from Nate Sudfield? The opposite. So, again, it the, what, he, what Nate Sudfield did in training camp and practice did not translate into an, a regular game. Is It's kind of the opposite with, with, with Hendon Hooker. He's been a little inconsistent in camp. And we've seen how he did in game time. He knows he's going to get hit, and he was calm. So we just seen a significant change, right? That's the importance of preseason. Jake Bates, he only had one kick, 53-yarder, but he made it when it's rainy. You know, he's made some misses in camp. But when it, the lights were on, well, that's something we've been talking about, not only the lights on, but it was raining bad, and he made a 53-yarder like it was nothing. So that's a good thing. Still, we got to see more consistency with some of these players, especially when you're talking about Jake Bates, who could be the kicker for the Detroit Lions. It's not a depth thing. He legitimately could be a kicker for the Lions, so we're, that's why we're watching him quite a bit. Sione Vaki. Huge takeaway from here. This guy may jump to RB3 because of this. Extremely important. Isaac Ukwu. Guy trying to make the roster as an edge. He performed well. So, don't get too upset about wins and losses. Don't get upset. And if a player does bad on a fourth string or third string, they're probably not making the roster anyways. So, don't get upset about it. Well, that player missed a big play. Oh, that defender missed. He's not going to be on the roster in two weeks. You got to understand that that the starters are going to be much better. But we're just trying to we're trying to get the last maybe five roster spots solidified. That's what preseason's about. It's not about wins. It's about solidifying your 53-man roster, seeing what you got, and growth and consistency. So don't get upset, folks, with that. And that's what I'm going to preach. Preseason is boring, but it's important for these young players. It's not important for the starters. It's not important for wins and losses. I don't care if we go in three in preseason. I truly don't care. It means nothing. So just... Relax, we'll get through it, and then we'll get to week one. With that said, folks, adios.